Hello and welcome back. I'm Dave and today we learn how to import JSON data into Houdini. So before we start thinking about the how, we should clarify what JSON data is and have a quick look at the example file. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is a lightweight format to structure and interchange data. It is not bound to any language and is easy to read for both humans and computers. Therefore, it's very commonly used. For example, if you want to export or import your Alexa skill on the Amazon development site, you do that with a JSON file. In a Patreon exclusive advanced version of this video, I use that exact file for my Houdini database Alexa skill. But let's take a look how a simple JSON file might look like. Here you can see the general form you might come across in this format. You have some sort of naming convention that describes the data model and inside that you might find a container holding objects. Those objects can then have a set of name and value pairs. That data could describe anything, attributes for your geometry, settings for a simulation or simply data you need to visualize. Here in my example, I provided a list of three objects with slightly different attributes you might use in Houdini, like name or p-scale. So let's bring this data into your Houdini scene. As you can see, I prepared a small setup mainly consisting of three simple shapes connected to a switch node. The input on the switch is still on default, so whichever of the three inputs is active, that shape goes into the rest of the node tree. And that is a copied points node capsuled in a for each point loop to be specific. The only thing missing are points on which the shapes can be copied on. I could create an add node to create one and then connect it to the input. And as you can see, that takes the active shape and puts it on the point. Nothing special. Let me get rid of this because we are going to create our own JSON infused points with Python. We take a closer look at the second tree in a bit. So first let's create a Python node. With this node, we can write and execute Python scripts, like loading JSON data and do something with it. But first we need to tell it where that file is. So head over to the parameter interface and what we need is a file parameter that can specify the path to our file. Give it a creative and unique name and then we pick our file from its directory. This node will create the points to both of these setups. So I connect them to their respective input nodes. Now let's head over to the code itself. As a first thing to do, we need to import the JSON package to allow Python to use the necessary methods. Then we need to evaluate the file path we just put into the file parameter. To work with a JSON file, we need to create a handle that can access it. This is done with the open command with an R for read. I name it JSON file because that's what it is and then load its contents with json.load. The result is written into the variable input. Let's give it a quick test by printing what is now inside that variable. And it looks like the data is coming in which is good, but not yet of any use for us. So let's access the individual objects to change that. At the very top of the file, we saw that the main container was called data model, which I save in its own variable. With that variable, I can now access its contents. And that is the list of objects, which was called my objects. I want to create points and add the JSON values to it. But to do that, I need to create attributes on the Houdini side first. I can use an attribute create sop in front of the Python node to do that, or I do it right here in Python. The choice is yours. But here in Python, you need to use the geo object and use the method add attrib. It needs the information which kind of attribute it should add, and that comes from the hue object and its method add attrib type. And we want a point attribute. Then specify the name and the initial value. 
That initial value is not unimportant since Python will guess which data type you want to use from that. A zero becomes an integer, while apostrophes end up being a string. The same goes for float values, which expect a dot. A bit more interesting are attributes like scale and color. Inside Houdini, we know that these are vectors, but we need to tell Python that this is the case. The hue object knows these Houdini data types, and in this case, it is vector3. After we prepared the attributes, we can start to iterate over the individual objects contained in the variable objects. For any variable name you like, in the list you want to loop over, colon. We are inside the object, or at least we have access to the data that is stored inside it. As with the model, we can now access the data and write it into a variable for direct access. The objects had a name and two sets of data called data and data2. Now we are at the point where we can create the point using the geo handle and the method createPoint. The reference to that point is now saved in PT, and that means we can use it to set its attributes like so. And this seems to be right. We do have three points, as you can see in the spreadsheet. Also, the attribute name is filled, and the other attributes are created as well. But you will notice that even though the for each loop does gather three points, we don't see any geometry if we put the visibility flag on the output. So what is going on here? We can clearly see the geometry on the switch node, but not on the copy node. The answer is simple. We created crucial Houdini attributes that influence the visible result. For one, we created the p scale attribute, which determines the general scale each point applies on the copied geometry. It is initialized with zero, so the geometry would be there, but scaled down into nothing. But that attribute alone on one would not be enough since we established another attribute, and that is scale. This attribute directly influences the geometry scale parameters, and they are also initialized with zero. So with p scale on one and the scale attribute renamed to something Houdini doesn't recognize, we should see a shape. And there it is. So that means we actually created points with the Python node, we brought in the name value from the JSON file, and we created Houdini relevant attributes. Let's go ahead and bring in the other values from the file and apply them to our points. We could fill the name attribute with the variable, but the rest of the data is inside datasets. So to access the ID, for example, I need to address it the same way I did with the data model itself. Continue with the other attributes in the same fashion, and only when you reach the attributes that are not basic data types, but a vector, you need a slightly different format. Again, you use the vector3 through the U model, and this time you access the JSON data to set the values. Scale X, Y, and Z were in it, as well as the RGB values that we can apply to the color attribute. If we now take a peek at our spreadsheet, we can see that the data was successfully stored on the points. That means we now also have a p scale and a scale value, which should result in three copies of the one active shape on the switch node. At the moment, the box is active, so we see three versions of it at different sizes due to a different p scale. And as you can see, the red copy has a bigger scale y value, while the object with the blue color has a smaller p scale overall. Now the last piece of the puzzle is to utilize one of the values coming from the JSON file to control a parameter. One of them was called type. And as if I would have planned this, each object has a different value here. So if we use an expression to access point attributes on the begin sub, reading the type attribute on point number zero, and each point going through a point loop has number zero, we can read out the individual value. Now each object activates a different shape. 
And finally, let's take a quick look at the second setup, which is fairly similar, except that the points to copy to are already there. They exist in form of a grid. If we cut the connection to the Python node, we simply use those points and copy a lot of boxes here. We still have the expression on the switch node, but since there's nothing changing that attribute, it is always zero. The difference of this setup is that we use an attribute transfer node to bring the values from the JSON file into our setup. So as soon as I connect the Python node again, everything we set up goes through the transfer and applies the attributes to each copy. Since we only have three points to copy from, they get reused over and over again, creating this pattern. In this simple example, this doesn't look like much, but you might see its potential using a more complex data set and a bigger variety of shapes to choose from. An interesting use case for this could be a Greeble setup. This zip file and the example JSON file will go public on my Patreon four days after release of this video. If you found this interesting, I invite you again to check out the Patreon exclusive area where I'm using a much more complex JSON file. An Alexa skill file to be specific, doing a bit more advanced stuff with the data coming in. Anyway, I hope you found this useful and are back next time. Cheers.